Part 3. Chapter 14. Now let us pay more attention to Claude Varilme, the man from France, who we will come to refer to here as today's anti-Messiah. I have proved here that the man I was sent by Alionin to oppose, really does exist. I met him, I hugged him, I spoke to him, I even was photographed with him and got him to autograph a copy of his book for me. And as Alionin told me, he is an anti-Messiah. And his own words prove that he is that sort of being, that man is called Claude Verilm. Before I begin to write about him in depth, I have to bring your attention to some of the people that were shown to me by Alionin, first as children, then as adults. The first edition of this book was much longer and in it I commented in depth about those people who went on to spread doctrines, spearhead political regimes, and who all had links with Lucifer and Satan. I am referring to people like Karl Marx, Mussolini, Rasputin, and Adolf Hitler. People who surely prepared the way for our man of the moment, Claude Verilm. However, I have been advised to make this edition shorter, and concentrate solely on Verilm. Therefore I will try to be brief in my comments about the men named above. Satan, to come to his aims and satisfy his desires, has ceaselessly been using people who he knows can be easily persuaded to establish his criminal and despotic political regimes, his religious philosophies and movements. His main aims are and have always been the persecution and mass murder and destruction of humanity in general and of the Jewish people in particular. His aim is the usurpation of any messiah's status and future legal claim to earth, and also the extinction of belief in God on earth. His aim is the establishment of himself as the despotic ruler and owner of the planet earth, followed by the extermination of the human race and the exploitation of earth's natural and nuclear resources. That could put him in a jolly advantageous position, and the launching of bloody attacks on the paradisiacal galactic worlds of Yahweh, the leader of the Lionin for we must stop thinking of the creators as immaterial beings, that cannot be seen. We have seen how the creation on earth came about, and we must keep in mind that Satan is a murderous and terribly powerful political enemy of Yahweh. He is an enemy who is determined to ensure that Yahweh's experiments with those spirits, which we all were, are never finalized and concluded. Which finalization and conclusion is the coming of messiahs on earth and the realization of man's divinity, which could lead to the transformation of earth into a true paradise. The only thing we have to know is that all those above, Elionin and the renegades, have scientific and technological knowledge and evolution which are hundreds of thousands, and millions of years more advanced than ours, and diverse supernatural powers which have nothing to do with technology. Yahweh is the good one, while Satan is the evil, mad criminal one. And these qualities and defaults are well mirrored by us humans. We are now on the last step of that epic adventure that began with Adam being created. And we should make sure, that we be not misled by the usurper, Satan, before we realize our divinities, and before our own Elionin or any other true messiah comes. To those who might be tempted to side up with Satan, may I remind them that he has already lost, and he shall never again be what, or who he once was before his rebellions? Therefore, those supporting him shall only suffer a fate similar to his. Satanists, Satan and his fallen angels and devil worshippers believe in what they call the law of reciprocal maintenance of everything that exists. For this maintenance, certain chemical substances are needed, with the help of which life is carried out. These substances serve for the maintenance of all that exists, and only when a living being dies can they be obtained. So at certain periods, there must proceed on the planet Earth a definite quantity of deaths as in their totality will yield vibrations of a definite degree of power. So, the more sacrifices human beings make, the more their rate of mortality will decline, but also their birth rate will decline. And the birth rate declines because they exist as they are supposed to. That is, their issues from them radiations yielding vibrations required from them by nature for the cosmos in general, and for the maintenance of the moon and another planet which is in our solar system. And why, do they say that the birth rate will diminish and need not rise? Because with the sacrifices, the substances needed from them are produced in great quantity. And nature also does not fail to adapt herself to the diminishing of birth rate, so those who live do so longer. But when humans cease to willingly make sacrifices, their birth rate has to increase, 
and then there must be a great war. And in that way the substances can be drawn or extracted out of earth and humans by force. According to Satan, the other renegades, and all their human supporters who are nothing but Satanists, earth is just an unfortunate, ill-fated planet, and the existence of human beings in it was abnormal in the beginning. But they became useful when it came to maintaining the moon and the beings of Mars and Saturn, and other extraterrestrials. But with the belief in God and with Christianity, and the belief in good and evil, their existences are now endangered. Their mental powers are affected. And they and all the beings of purgatory are affected. That is why, according to Satan and his followers, earth and humanity must be destroyed. Otherwise he and his angels need to always send or appoint a being to which they give a very high reason for the guidance of the unfortunate human beings. Beings of whom it will be argued that some were great thinkers. Yes, I do not say they were not, but what spirits hid inside those people? What were the unseen and unknown forces that had, at some time affected and controlled some of them? And also religious leaders like Jim Jones and all those who come with deceitful doctrines, then encourage or force their followers to deliberately commit suicide, and murders for all kinds of false reasons. Those were and are Satan's prophets. For Satan, the invention of poison gas in Germany and the invention of the machine gun were salutary. According to Satan and his renegade's reasoning, for every million dead human beings, their powers increase, and their lifestyle is ameliorated. First it used to be animals that were sacrificed. Then these were replaced gradually by human sacrifices. The functions of all these satanic prophets are twofold, some writers, poets, leaders and founders of satanic and unconventional esoteric and religious orders, have a duty to teach decadence, destroy moral values, religions, the church and faith in God, and turn people to atheism and Satanism. Others also have the duty to encourage holy wars. And the others, that is those who become heads of states, emperors and kings must be despotic and bloodthirsty. These particular ones also usually have one same ultimate aim, the takeover of the world or of as many countries as possible, which could then be transformed into a powerful empire. As for Satan, humanity's existence is not that important. These leaders and writers are fed one same theory, the creation of a master race of supermen and of a new world. These are men preferably who will not believe in God, the soul, sin, the resurrection and the last judgment. In which case, these leaders would not hesitate to exterminate the rest of other stupid worthless human beings, whose existence, according to them, is harmful for these geniuses, these supermen. In doing so, they acquire power and longevity for themselves, the equilibrium is properly re-established in the lives of the other supermen and geniuses of the other planets of our solar system and the galaxy where the renegades live. Finally, they would be free to build a better world, and a new race of supermen who can reason. This therefore, accounts for the mass murders and human sacrifices perpetrated since the beginning of time, and for the poison gassings and massacres perpetrated by people like Mussolini and Hitler, as we shall see in the coming chapters. All the above beliefs which to certain silly Satanists, sound convincing and true are a pack of nonsense. Those teachings have only one aim, the extermination of as many human beings as possible, and the failure of God's and of Elianan's plan. It all comes back to the conflict between Yahweh and Satan. Satan, the eternal enemy who has already lost, is doing now nothing but sabotage. And the sooner Satan's prophets and Satanists realize this, the better. Hitler's dream was to create a race of supermen. This was the promise made to him by Satan. But after Hitler had committed all those crimes for him, Satan abandoned him and all his friends. Is it for nothing that God called Satan, the father of lies and perdition? How long will humans continue swallowing the lies of Satan and his clique before they open their eyes to the truth? When will they understand, that the devil loves nobody on earth, not these antichrists, and not even Claude Viril Rail? All the people, groups, organizations, political regimes and religions that I shall cite here were, and are, all rooted in Satanism. The groups were all started by Satanists and people controlled by Satan, with the only aim of fulfilling the ultimate Satanist aim. That aim is the creation of the supermen of a new world. Many authors and poets were Satanists or were inspired, 
on their own admission, by demons. One such author called J. K. Homans wrote two books, Down There and Against Nature, praising decadence, perversion and Satanism. Another one is George Moore with his Confessions of Young Man. And there is the well-known Marquis de Sade, who praised pain and the need to derive pleasure by it. Then there are others like Barbie Doravilly and Mirabeau. Also there was M. P. Scheele with his near-prophetic book entitled The S.S. It described supermen who passed through Europe, murdering those whose flaws impeded the evolution of man. Such a gang of murderers was formed in the government of Adolf Hitler. Of some of the political regimes and religious doctrines that Satan has used, I shall cite a few, like, Marxism, Nationalist Socialism, Fascism, Nazism, Early Catholicism, and Nature Worshipping, Realism, and Satanism. And before anyone begins to scream, I will explain myself momentarily. For now, let's continue. As for names of people, we first have the name of Satan and Cain. And the following names will regularly come up. They are, Schopenhauer, Karl Marx, Anton Zandor Lave, Friedrich Nietzsche, Benito Mussolini, Richard Wagner, Adolf Hitler, Alistair Crowley, G. I. Gurdjieff, Karl Haushofer, and finally Claude Viril Rail. Many words and adjectives are repetitively attached to all the names above. Words like poverty, madness, broken homes, illegitimacy, dreams and ambitions, materialism, supermen, Aryan master races and anti-Semitism, demonism and Satanism. A common propriety of all nature worshippers is lasciviousness, laziness, obsession with sex, and exploitation of their fellow companions. Now do not misunderstand me. When I mention socialism and Marxism, I do not mean the ordinary political parties or their ordinary party members of today, as the ordinary family members or country citizen might see them. I am talking about a peculiar, out-of-the-ordinary occult sort. I am talking about some of the fanatical party leaders who were at the head of these at the beginning, and who were ready to resort to ruse, blackmail, murder, the occult and Satan in order to force their ideas and regimes across, and onto the unsuspecting masses. It is not my intention at all to discuss political views in this book, my only aim is Satan and the anti-Messiah, and their influence on humanity in general and on certain human beings, in particular. As I said, a lionin showed me the film of persons that were being met by Satan, like Claude Viril. So I did some research on them to try and understand a bit more, and I definitely got proof that those men were influenced by Satan in their rise to power. We'll see more about them as we go on, on that note, let's look at Claude Viril. Viril the French anti-Messiah. As Yahweh himself and a lionin say, Everything takes place on the physical and spiritual level. So everything that happens on earth reflects very much what happens in their galaxy, and an explosion of the forces of evil attacking the forces of good will result in giant wars on earth. Fighting in our creator's galaxy immediately triggers wars and fighting, and huge trade union strikes on earth. Every time the evil supporters of Satan in the galaxies launch an attack on Elianin's worlds, the worlds of our creators, a sadistic dictator will also reveal himself on earth, sprung like out of nowhere to begin mass massacres, tortures, murders, and so will one particular religious leader. Politically, racism in general and anti-Semitism in particular will be involved. A person will begin his evil works hiding behind a religion, but he will have one unique aim, build a world empire, take over the planet and do with it as he will, and all ending up in mass massacres of people. People like Mussolini, and Hitler were that type of evil dictators. They had this crazy idea of creating a master race. As we know, all psychopathic killers have a method for their crimes, the same ideas, the same thoughts, and these never vary. Viriln is also that kind of evil religious leader. The same thing goes for Satan who is a master criminal. Therefore all dictators and religious leaders, who dabble in Satanism and depend on it to get the results they want, end up having the same doctrines and the same philosophies. People might look different, speak different language, be of different races and even be born dozens of years, or centuries, or millennia apart, but they will all be uncannily similar in their acts, if they have let themselves be mentally controlled by Satan. And anyone involving himself with Satan will also risk suffering the same fate as Satan. For as God decrees his laws, 
they also come to pass. And as I have already said, humanity will see the same results when they break the same laws, until Messiah comes and reigns on earth. It was promised that a Messiah would come at the end of the following millennium if we are to faithfully believe what we read. But it was also prophesied that Satan would try to come and usurp that Messiah's throne, again, so he will designate an anti-Messiah, or anti-Christ, who will try to convert the whole of earth's population to Satanism or to the support of the renegades, so that they may welcome Satan, when he comes. One such anti-Messiah has now, in his own words, gathered fifty thousand followers or more now. His next step will be to go to Israel and erect his abominable thing in Jerusalem. And that will happen as prophesied. That anti-Messiah Varil, has already long ago sent his disciples to Jerusalem, who have told Jewish people that he is a prophet sent by God, as prophesied by Jesus himself. And amazingly, the Jewish people welcomed them. So Satan is now laughing at Yahweh, bragging that he will be welcomed while Jesus was scorned and murdered. And because the Jews accepted Verilm the anti-Messiah, even though they were few, there is no turning back now. That is why the galactic war has begun. Proof of it is seen time after time, by mysterious things falling to earth, mysterious explosions of falling unknown objects, which cause extensive destruction and which cannot be explained. And on earth, things also have started rolling, changes are slowly taking place. But it will take a whole thousand years or more for everything to fructify and be accomplished. Time as we calculated on earth is not calculated that way by Elianin. What we see as a very long time is very short for them. Remember that the times are now mainly counted on earth starting from the birth of Yeshua of Nazareth. But know that to begin with, Yeshua was born seven years before the officially recorded time. So the new millennium actually started in 1993 of this last 20th century. And the people who shall be predominant in the events that will take place will be connected with the Muslims and Claude Verilm. What Verilm has begun, another like him shall bring to fruition. What Saddam Hussein did last century and at the beginning of this new millennium another one shall repeat. And when that happens there shall be no turning back, as his actions will trigger a war that will involve the whole of earth. So if I may use apocalyptic language, the beast that shall bring earth to her knees has two horns so to speak. The two horns are connected to the last empire of the beast, but these horns are not empires, they are human beings. So, one of the horns leads people who worship the dragon or, Satan, the other should have authority as the head of a state in the Muslim Arab world. And this Muslim leader should be so notorious that when he speaks, the attention of the whole world is attracted. People will begin to wonder about that Muslim leader. He will be so powerful that many states will have to be on his side to get matters sorted out easily. But this leader shall only be the pointer, he shall signal things to come. He shall not be an anti-Messiah, because the beast and the men of his time shall worship the dragon, who shall have given his power to him. But as far as we know, that Muslim leader, like the rest of other Arabs, shall be a fanatically religious Muslim, as he shall even call holy wars against Christians, Jews, and other people of the rest of the world, mainly the Europeans and the Americans. He too shall be linked with Satan, because of his admiration for those leaders of old, who were guided and inspired in their work by Satan, people like Hitler and Mussolini. But even though he will be renowned to be a great admirer of Hitler, and shall even believe that he is Hitler reincarnated, he shall not be an atheist or a God-hater. Then those who would be seeking to guess who the anti-Messiah will be shall know that the other one must be exactly like Hitler to be the one they shall be looking for. To definitely point the finger at Claude Verilm as today's anti-Messiah and his future representative in the time to come, I will tell you this, what has already happened in the past will happen again. Allow me take a peek in the future, if I am to believe what Elianen told me during those final teachings. As in 656 to 657 Jerusalem was taken by the Muslims, in 659, the Omayyad dynasty took over. At that time the building of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem had already begun. You will remember that Yeshua's birth took place seven years before the year when we, today think he was born. So, if we add 659 plus 7 equals 666 we fall exactly on 666. 
for the year when the Omayyad took over Jerusalem was exactly 666 years after the birth of Yeshua. The Omayyad, who were Muslims, were the ones who erected the Dome of the Rock. By that year we discover that the millennium should have dawned in 1993, seven years earlier than we expected it. Anyway, by the year 666 we have the clue of when Jerusalem was most weakened and who was ruling her then. The same thing will happen again. Jerusalem will be weakened at the time when, the building of a structure shall have begun in her. But the structure this time shall not be erected by people of the Muslim faith. Then let it be known that our events will begin taking place when an empire, state or republic, similar to the one which occupied Jerusalem at that time, will exist on earth, that will be making much noise and news. Iraq shall again be a power to be reckoned with in the Muslim world and its ruler will be making himself mundially notorious. The Arab world will have a virulent Jew-hating, Hitler clone in power, doing everything to be like, and committing deeds worthy of the former German dictator. But while he reigns, the anti-Messiah of that time would have also begun his work, turning the world even more to Satanism. And the anti-Messiah shall by now be at the head of millions of fanatic Raelian and similar followers. For a while, the Muslim political leader will be assumed to be the anti-Messiah, but no, he will not be. The real one the world should watch out for, the one who shall be Satan's son and prophet. One who should be totally materialistic and he should preach atheism, and more, who should fight against God. But pay attention. As we know, all anti-messiahs should be rooted in Satanism. We have seen examples of Satanist messiahs and there is something very common about them, all their doctrines are man-orientated. All their ideas are based on a Karl Marx's style materialism. They are all atheists and insist on one thing, the abolition of the church and of deist doctrines on earth. But as we know, Arabs are very religious people. They are not atheist. They do believe in God, whom they call Allah. And even though they commit crimes, which, in our opinion, the true God condemns, Muslims definitely are neither atheists nor Satanists. So any Arab leader will never be able to cope with the materialistic habits and indulgences of a Hitler. But our Muslim leader will succeed where Hitler failed, and establish his state, which might not even be headed by him then, but by someone like him in the future. I say that he will succeed where Hitler failed, because while the peace groups will be encouraging other countries to disarm themselves and keep peace, he will keep his arsenal and even stock up with deadlier weapons. He shall have the money to get them. So, when people least expect, he will invade them. But he will not keep power for long because his materialistic political ideas will not be shared by his Muslim subjects. Riches and power will no longer seem so sweet. Meanwhile, the contents of this book will already have been long published and known, and Israel shall be warned, and the anti-Messiah of that time shall have even more followers. Then he will suddenly appear like out of nowhere, and impose his presence and domination on humanity. The anti-Messiah shall have even more followers. It does not have to be Viriln of course. When he dies, anyone who shall replace him and any other leader of the Raelians shall be the anti-Messiah of the time, till these events begin to take place. And from a religious figure, he will become a full-blown politician. Then the massacre of the people of God shall begin. When his temple for Satan is built in Palestine, he will gloat, and it shall be a triumph over Jesus and over and God, if he builds it in or near Jerusalem, God's chosen and cherished city, among his chosen people. That is where Satan will install himself. There, the Antichrist will act as a modern-day Pied Piper, luring hundreds of thousands of European and world youth. He shall be like a giant human magnet, attracting, catching and brainwashing them all to support his idealistic policies. He will sit quietly in the background, waiting for the outcome of the Arab quest, while planning his next moves, possibly for building the homes of those who ordered him to set up his embassy. That shall be the last awful horror to stand in Palestine, or Jerusalem before the beginning of disasters. For God's anger shall trigger those bloody wars, which shall culminate in the famous fight of Armageddon. The fighting will rage everywhere, and then be concentrated in the borders between Israel, Syria, and Jordan. Fighting shall by then be between those I call the saints, that is all those who believe in God, and the worldwide evil army of the Antichrist. 
and thanks to the anti-Messiah's presence, his people shall get help from Satan, or in other words, from renegade extraterrestrials, with cities being destroyed from space. That is when Messiah shall come and join in the fighting, with the arch-messenger Michael at the head of his powerful galactic army of Elyonin, to save the believers, and humanity, which by then should have dwindled to nearly nothing, compared to what the entire population of earth should be then. The stirred humanity, all followers of the Antichrist, will all gather to stupidly fight against the army of the Elyonin. But Messiah shall win, if we believe the apocalypse of John. But the Holocaust of Hitler will be nothing compared to what will happen with that anti-Messiah of the future. Because there shall be cities whose entire populations shall perish, leaving just five or ten people alive, and also, not only will many people lose their lives but they will also lose their souls. Hitler hated Jewry and all colored, but the future anti-Messiah will go after the entire human race. The future and ultimate anti-Messiah will therefore not be a Muslim politician. He will one day be the man leading the followers of the man about whom I am writing. This is today's Antichrist. Name, Claude Verilm. Born, 30th of September 1946. At, 2 o'clock in the morning, like Karl Marx City, Vichy. Country of birth, France. Age now, 65 years old. Lived in the south of France, near a village Albi, not very far from Marseille, at a camp he called Eden, then moved to Canada. At the last news I had of him, he was planning to establish headquarters in Las Vegas. I no longer bother to know where he lives now. He was at the time when I had first written out this message, a divorced father of two children. A son called Ramuel, and a daughter called Auror. He had since been married again to a fifteen-year-old, and divorced, I think. There are so many women for him to choose from, that I wonder why he even bothers with special relationships with some, since he is never faithful to any of them. The man, who will be leading the religion that Verilne has founded, whether it will still be known by the same name or by another, will be one of the anti-messiahs of the future. Verilne's extraterrestrials gave him the name of Rail. But who is Claude Verilne according to the scriptures? To qualify as one of the famous biblical anti-messiahs, or anti-Christ, Claude Verilm Rail must fulfill the conditions underneath, and fit all the descriptions. The Antichrist had to be the incarnation of Satan or he should be the real-life son of Satan. He should be known to blaspheme the name of God and teach godlessness to people. He should teach Marxist and materialistic doctrines. He should be totally man-oriented. He should pervert people and turn them to debauchery, making them to become sensual, carnal and diabolical he should change the times. That is, the way dates, month and years have normally been known for a long time. He should change all the laws of YHWH and replace them with Satan's. He should plan to take over the world and go ahead with the plan. For that he should be the leader of a new satanic hermetic religion, which shall serve to recruit members and followers for his political party, and his future government. He should hate God and abolish all forms of worship he should use the swastika, the hermetic cross, as his emblem. He should make people worship the swastika, the sign of Satan. And he should make them love Satan more than God. He should lie to people that he is also the son of YHWH God Most High. He should exalt himself above the Messiah and God. And most of all, he should have close connections with the Jewish people. Also, he should be connected personally to the word Apocalypse. Now let us see. Does our French Antichrist fits all these descriptions? The answer is yes, Claude Verilne is, and does all those things. He is also, first of all, known according to human laws, or legally, as the son of a Jew, even though he was born in France. And that puts him in close relation to the Jews. The Doctrines of the Anti-Messiah Several times already in this book, I have written in detail what real Antichrists teach according to the New Testament, and those teachings never seem to vary. I have mentioned two antichrists from the Book of Mormon, but I intentionally omitted to reproduce their stories here to allow you to read about them yourselves. In short, who were they and what did they teach, and do Verilm's teachings resemble theirs? Does he in any way resemble them? Let us find out very rapidly. Their names were Korahor and Sherem. 
It is my hope that you shall read the Book of Mormon. That is where you can find the stories of those two. The story of Sherem can be found in the Book of Jacob, chapter 7, and that of Korahor can be read in the Book of Alma, chapter 30, in the Book of Mormon. In the Bible's New Testament, 2 Thessalonians, 2, and 2 Peter, 2 say a lot about men similar to the man I am writing about, and who was to be the major antichrist of the last century, 1900 to 2000, and of course of this century as well, even though other false messiahs are predicted. It is written in the two biblical books named above, that the antichrist will deny that there is a God, and teach that there is no God. Say that there is no devil. Say that there is no spirit and no soul. Say that there never were, and never will be any miracles. Say that Jesus did not perform miracles. Say that there is no hell. He will proclaim himself to be God, by saying that he is the true son of Yahweh. He will say that he is a prophet, the prophet of prophets, and the shepherd of shepherds. He will encourage free, perverted sex. He will banish marriage. He will teach sensuality, or sensual meditation, Satan's harmful way of enslaving people. He will mislead people and get them to build a temple, which shall be a residence, an abominable place of worship for Satan. He will change the laws of God and of earth governments, and the times. He will be lawless and teach lawlessness by disobedience of God and country's laws. Finally his doctrine will be the doctrine of demons. Well, Claude Viril Rail does do, and teach everything cited above, and worse. To do this, he wrote his first five books. One the book which says the truth, a message from extraterrestrials in that book he changes all the scriptures. Quoting the Bible, this book of lies is none other than Satan's version of the creation, with himself and the fallen angels being the good ones, while Yahweh is portrayed as a heartless scientist who treated Adam and Eve the same way he treated the animals he created. The other interpretations of the Bible are similar to Adolf Hitler's, read Hitler's table talks by Martin Bormann. The whole is a mixture of Aryan, Marxist, Fascist, Taoist, Gurdjieff's and Buddhist doctrines. There is a lot of Nietzsche in it too. In it, the Lord's Prayer is abolished and replaced with a new invocation to Satan, Lucifer, the fallen angels and pro-Satanist extraterrestrials, which is to be done in front of a large swastika poster, which he provides with his many tapes. 2A second volume entitled They Took Me to Their Planet tells people many lies, still quoting the Bible and giving lying interpretations to suit his evil purposes. People are advised never to get baptized, instead they should go and be sealed on the forehead to Satan, by the realm himself or his many angels or guides and bishops. He describes a machine which he claims is used to recreate people out of their cells, which allows them to live 1,000 years after each recreation, and thanks to which people can choose exactly what they want to look like, which features they want to have and which color they want to be, as I have told already. So he advises people to give him a piece of their frontal bones. That is, at their death, they must instruct for this bone to be removed and given to him for their recreation by the extraterrestrials when they come. And he says that only those who join his religion shall gain eternal life, which of course, is only possible through Satan and his extraterrestrials. According to him, it was Yahweh the leader of Elianim, our creators, who sent him to tell humanity that there is no God, and that virtually everything he had formerly asked the prophets to tell humanity until now, has been nothing but lies, and that, because of the primitive, savage state of humanity, they needed to be lied to. And for that, for those who till now have believed so, Jesus' redeeming qualities are not valid. Everything according to him is just a con. Both the two above books are now all being published as one. Thus what I shall call his second book, entitled, Sensual Meditation is Nothing but a Complete Brainwashing and Depersonalization Manual. That book, combined with a set of audio tapes which his followers have to buy separately, will transform human beings beyond recognition, making them heartless, insensitive, sex-mad, users-abusers, and slaves to the pleasures of the flesh, and totally devoid of moral values. The reader will say so what? That man is just a conman. But open your Bibles on the pages that I cited earlier on, and see for yourselves. Is everything not there? Am I not right? And if you still do not believe the words of the Bible, then you should move on to his other book entitled, 
Let's welcome our fathers from space. It is called in French, Ocroyer les extraterrestres. In it, you shall read in chapter 2, page 85 this subtitle, The Devil Does Not Exist, I Met Him. In that book he recounts how loving Satan regarded him with eyes full of love, fraternity and warmth so did Lucifer who was also there. In the same chapter on page 102, you will find the subtitle, My Father W.H.O. Art in Heaven. In it, he said that the perverted extraterrestrial who had dictated his book to him, and who went against all that God most high holds most holy and sacred, told him that he was his real father. That humanoid, who was none other than Tiamat, or Satan, told him that he was called Yahweh, my Elianans Yahweh, to be exact. But don't take my word for it, let's quote a bit from that book. On page 103, Varilm claims first, I found myself flying about twenty meters above luxuriant vegetation, after a smooth exit from the laboratory where my mind had been modified in the strange shell-shaped chair. Then he goes on to reveal at the bottom of P.104. The person whom from you looked upon as your father was not your real father. After the explosion at Hiroshima, we decided that the time had come to send a new messenger on earth. He would be the last prophet, but the one to address mankind, asking them to understand, not to believe. We then selected a woman, as we had done in the time of Jesus. This woman was taken aboard one of our ships and inseminated as we had done with the mother of Jesus. Then she was freed after we had totally erased from her memory all traces of what had happened. We had it arranged so that she would meet a man, who could support the child financially and would raise him decently. This man had to be from a different religion than that of the woman so that the child would be raised without strong religious conditioning. This is why the man whom you took for your father and believed that he truly was, was a Jew. Your foster father was like Joseph, he was to take care of you and your mother until such time as you could provide for yourself. From this moment you may call me father, because you are my son, because you are my son, he says the alien said that. Your real father is also the father of Jesus, and that makes you brothers. You are presently looking at your father. I did not invent these words, they poured from Varilm's own lying pen. Well, that conception, if it happened as he says, could be true, but the father was Satan, and certainly not Yahweh. He claimed that he spent a whole night enjoying a kinky seven in a bed sex session with six biological robots. He says that these are created from the machine I mentioned earlier, they are virtually human but with the difference that they are totally submissive slaves, made especially for his extraterrestrial's carnal enjoyment as a lionin did tell us earlier on. And not only that, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Joseph Smith, Muhammad, Buddha, Mary, Jesus' mother, all other biblical ladies, and all the ancient prophets enjoyed eternal sessions of, group sex, homosexual and lesbian orgies, banquets and gangbangs with each other, and absolutely submissive, female and male biological robots you already know that. I ask you in all honesty, does that sound like someone who comes in the names of Yahweh the leader of Elianin, or who comes in the name of Jehovah God Most High, the one we know? No. 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 A billion times no. I therefore take you all for witnesses and remind you of what Elianin themselves told me and that I faithfully reproduced in this book. The man from France indeed, did write exactly the opposite of what Elianin told me, and he is and has behaved exactly as they predicted that he would. Let us continue with our evidence. Varilm says that he is God. By saying that he is the son of Yahweh he is actually saying that he is Yahweh himself, just like Lucifer did. And for that the scriptures say. Puffed up with pride, you have claimed to be a God. I sit on the throne of God, like God, surrounded by crowds. You may pretend you are a God but no, you are mortal not divine, though you make plans in your heart like God. Behold, you are wiser than Daniel, there is no secret that can be kept from you. With your skill and wisdom, you have made yourself rich with treasures of gold and silver, by your intelligence and business sense, you made clever business deals and kept on making profits, how proud you are of your wealth. Now then this is what I, the Sovereign Lord, am saying, because you think you are as wise as God, I will bring ruthless enemies to attack you, the most terrible strangers, they will destroy all the beautiful things you have acquired by your skill and intelligence. 
They will kill you and send you to a watery grave with the rest of the dead of your armies. When they come to kill you, will you still claim, I am God? When you face your murderer, you will be a man and no God, at the hand of your murderer. You will die like a dog at the hand of godless foreigners. I the Lord God have given the command. Ezekiel 28 1-10. Claude Varil has been warned. That claim, which he has made and put in writing, that he is God, is condemned and punished with death, by God himself. He has changed the times. And again Daniel gave this prophecy about men like Claude Varil. He will try to change the times and the religious laws, then the Heavenly Father's court will sit in judgment, take away his power, and destroy him completely. Daniel 7 25-26. We now know about him changing all the religious commandments, rules and even the meaning of every biblical passage that he quoted. But sit comfortably and wait for this, he has changed the dates and times as you and I know them. All his followers, called Raelians, date their time now basing themselves on the year of Varilm's birth. So to them 2007 is the year 61 after Rail. And their new year begins the 6th of August, which is the anniversary of the dropping of the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima. This is what he says in his book P.261 You will date your writings counting the year 1 after Claude Rail, the last of the prophets. 1976 will therefore be the year 31 after Claude Rail, or the year 31 in the era of Aquarius, or the year 31 of the age of the Apocalypse, or the year 31 of the Golden Age and those words of course, are supposed to have been said by Yahweh. And that is not all, you will remember me mentioning the swastika and saying that it was Satan's emblem. While he asks all of his followers to wear one on a chain around their necks. These are the instructions written in his book preceded by the following subtitle, The Swastika. In order to recognize one another among believers, wear the medal decorated with the symbol of infinity which is the emblem of our creators, Moreover it functions as a psychic catalyst during the attempts of telepathic communications with the Elohim and contributes to the awakening of the mind. The message P287 How contradictory of our atheist prophet to talk about psychic catalysts. Is he not the one who ridicules everything spiritual, calling such things superstitious and obscurantist? And to start with, nobody needs any catalysts or medals to pray to God. He later changed the design of that swastika in order not to upset the people of Israel when his followers go to build his temple there. I must say that I was very upset when I first saw him and his followers wearing those swastikas. And I can say that I was responsible for that change, when I sat Marcus Wenner down, and expressed my feelings about how Jews will feel, about a Jew founding a religion using a swastika as an emblem, and then bringing that religion, with swastika waving flags to Israel. In the same way I also advised him about the official language they used. Now if I, a black Jew can feel so upset about the swastika, how more will the white Jews who lost their relatives in gas chambers? Not long after that in fact, in the next copy of their magazine Apocalypse an article appeared, quoting my words and my fears. Of course they took me seriously, because I myself am a Jew. But when he knew I had told about that change, he arrogantly decreed that his followers would go back to openly wearing and using the swastika. I again, had a hand in that through the mysteries, as I wished for Ilm to be shown for what he truly is, and he does not even know that. In his book The Sensual Meditation we find this passage, as explained in the beginning of this book, this symbol represents infinity in space and time and emits particularly harmonious waves of form. The poster showing the symbol, which is provided with the cassette should be stuck on the wall at the eye level, and if possible illuminated by a bright light with the rest of the room in darkness, once a person has tuned into themselves. They can become aware of something entirely foreign to themselves and allow themselves to be invaded by the vibrations transmitted by the drawing shape. P.112-113 I must point out that the tapes are highly hypnotic, and the something entirely foreign is none other than an insidious possession by Satan and evil spirits. And you have had a taste of what rails something foreign and the drawing of a vibrating swastika made Rachel van die Liard do in April 1990. She tried to murder my little Yahweh, because he was God hiding in the body of a baby. I tried to listen to that tape and switched it off after only two minutes. 
The feeling in me was one of dread, and I felt positively polluted. I have met many of those who have listened to the tapes and done that meditation, among these my own dead husband Philippe, they are all brainwashed, with psychopathic personalities and they have murder and wickedness in mind. Claude Viril lied to his followers that he will transform them into geniuses, but what he has succeeded in doing is creating candidates for the loony bin, that is exactly what he was truly aiming at. He claims that Satan, Lucifer and their gang have an automatic computer that will take a cell from humans in order to recreate them, but for his followers to be recreated and live eternally, well 1000 years and then the process should be repeated every 1000 years, they must give him their frontal bones, out of which his extraterrestrials will recreate the long dead Raelians. In his book The Message p. 241 he says, you will therefore ask not to be buried religiously. You will ask that your body be disposed of as discreetly as possible, except for the bone of your forehead, more precisely the part located above the beginning of the nose, 33 mm. 1.3 in, above the middle of the axis linking your two pupils. There must be at least one square centimeter, 0.4 in square. Now to all those who had first thought that Viril was just a con man, I say, think again, in the light of the above instructions. Of course you might say that he gave such an advice to add more credibility to his treachery. But I think that asking people to perform such obscene mutilation of dead bodies, on top of all the other crazy orders he had already given, is going right over the top. It is in very bad taste. But I personally know that Viriln had met a pro-Satanist space traveler, and that such a request is very serious. But the results shall definitely not be what the Raelians expect. The operations on the foreheads shall very simply produce the name and mark of Satan about which John wrote. And he causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, Revelations 13:16. well, Hitler did certainly cause people to be marked on the arm. Now Viriln is marking them on the forehead. To all Raelians, I tell them not to bother, they shall never truly be recreated by the extraterrestrials. As Elyonen have already said, they do not have that technology. The only things that can be made from those bones are biological robots. These shall be made looking like you, just to have an army of kamikaze robots, for them to fight Messiah with, and for which they shall have no feelings. Satan and Rael are cruelly lying to you. Elyonen said so earlier on in this message, and I repeat it now. Had Yeshua, Jesus, not said, As for the resurrection of the dead have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, Matthew 22 31 32. At the time of death, the soul goes back to Yahweh and to God with its perfect memory of its life on earth. Neither Yahweh the leader of Elianon, nor YHWHR God would ever recreate anyone from any dried bones. He did not need dried bones to create man before, why would he start now? Has he lost his first knowledge? Has he lost his divine power? Does he not remember exactly what all of his creations looked like? The reader should remember that Satan, who really is the devil personified, knows the scriptures, therefore he quotes the Bible, but he always interprets it in his own lying way and you must by now have understood that his prophet Rael is a false messiah, and not only that, Verilm brings worse, he brings the extermination of the human race. Throughout his books he claims to be a prophet sent by Yahweh, and as he prefers to say, the Elohim. That way, he can dissimulate the true identity of the persons he works for. He wrote, in his quest to turn the population of our planet into Satanism. Jew, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist and you who have another religion, open your eyes, reread your holy writings, and you will understand that this book is the last one, the one announced by your own prophets. P. 283 Wrong, Claude. The proof is that I wrote this one long after he wrote his, revealing him for the evil liar that he is. And there shall be many more books written after this one, when he will have become nothing but a distant memory. He continued, saying that he was told, you, Claude Rail, you are our ambassador on earth, and the people who believe in you must provide you with the means to accomplish your mission. You are the last of the prophets before the judgment, 
you are the prophet of the religion of religions, the demystifier, and the shepherd of shepherds, p. 219. See? What did I say? Then he clearly states, an angel from heaven contacted me. He said that I was the Messiah of the Apocalypse and told me to go and evangelize the earth, and to create a church of which I would be the Pope and the Pontiff. I the prophet of this Catholic religion. Well he declares very simply that he is none other than God himself, but under the name of Rael and Claude Viril. Blasphemy. We already know who God is, and we know what a true Messiah would be like. If Viril says that he is the living God, why does he try to confuse us by suddenly telling us that everything God said, taught and ordered in the Bible and the Book of Mormon and other scriptures was a lie, and that all that was supposed to have taken place did not take place? Why H.W.H. said that he is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow and forever. And he does not change his laws or his statutes. He taught us to be good, to be faithful to our partners, to be virtuous and chaste. But now Claude Verilme comes and tells us that God Most High has changed his mind, and he rather wants us to begin practicing perverted sex acts, join in orgies, sexually abuse and assault our children, and abort those we do not like, as many as we want to abort. He wants us to never get married, never be baptized, commit all kinds of abominations, and in other words be bad. Verilme tells us that our God has lost all his power and he now resorts to threats and suppositions, whereas he used to decree, and it came to pass. The prophet wrote about anti-messiahs, men like Verilm and other people like him that, he stirs up the children of men to secret plots of murder and all manner of secret works of darkness. That was absolutely right. Verilm tells Christians that Jesus came to die for nothing, because YHWH has taken Jesus' glory away from him and handed it over to him, the very perverted Claude Verilm. According to his writings and declarations, YHWH was wrong. A good, God-loving Messiah shall no longer come in his reign as explained in the scriptures. Now that position belongs to Claude Verilm. And it will depend on how much money people give to Claude, how much sex they have and how much they stupidly believe in his crazy declarations, that humans shall be saved. After all those prophecies that have come true, YHWH, the true living God cannot possibly have allowed Claude Verilm to play such havoc in his carefully planned arrangements for the planet Earth. Never in a million years. So if Yahweh, the leader of Elianon did not send Verilm, or dictate the message that Verilm wrote as he claimed, who else then but Yahweh's adversary would do that, try to send someone to sabotage Yahweh's work, as well as God's work, as he has always done? Only Satan would want to tell lies about YHWH our God and about Yahweh the leader of Elianon. Only the Antichrist would want to usurp the true Messiah's place, while helping Satan to usurp Yahweh's. And if Satan wants so badly to spoil things for Yahweh, he cannot be his friend, as Claude Verilm wants to fool us into believing. Satan, therefore really is his enemy, as Yahweh has always maintained in the message that Elianon gave me. And another important detail, he named his magazine Apocalypse, a blatant warning of what he has brought to earth. The Mark of Cain Rabbi Yeshua, Jesus, said, He who is not for me is against me. And Claude Viril is very much against Yeshua and against God. And as an anti-Messiah, we know that he should have a mark, again if we are to believe the revelations of John, but which mark? I shall remind you quickly of the story of Cain and Abel, Adam and Eve's very first two sons they had. Cain was a farmer, and Abel was a shepherd. As we saw, both of them had been initiated in the mysteries, and were priests with their father, for their people. Cain made a pact with Tiamat, commonly known on earth as Satan, who made him his high priest in the religion he was introducing to earth with Satan himself as the god that was to be worshipped in that religion. And to seal the pact, Cain killed Abel as the sacrifice. Cain was cursed and chased from the city where he lived with his parents, and he was told that he shall not die until Messiah comes to judge him. Cain argued that he could arrange to be killed. It is written, but the Lord answered him, No, if anyone kills you, seven times will be taken in revenge from him. So the Lord put a mark on Cain to warn anyone who met him not to kill him. Genesis 4 11-15 The sign that was put on Cain was two-sided. There was a physical, visible sign on his body, and a spiritual sign. 
my grandfather first defined that sign to me, and I have since read the same definition elsewhere in a book by an eminent Talmudist. Then Elianin gave me the same instruction on that subject. The Spiritual Sign If the reader goes back to the entire conversation with Cain, there is something that seems never to have caught people's attention. When Cain was asked, Where is your brother Abel? Cain answered, I did not know then he added, Am I my brother's keeper then? He used the past tense, Why is that? The answer is that there were two conversations, one between him and Melchizedek, and the other with Yahweh, and a lot more was said in the conversation that later took place between him and Yahweh than we were left with, after those who tampered with the scriptures had finished with their sacrilegious work. Cain, after being corrupted and lied to by Tiamat, Satan, until then believed that all things in existence after their creation, were consequent to chance and random occurrences as Tiamat had convinced him into believing. That accounts for his answer, I did not know. The whole sentence of what Cain said was, I did not know that you cared about anything happening in our world or to us. I did not know that all things that happen involve your hand or guidance. If that is so, then you, not I, should have guarded my brother, and should have made sure that nothing happened to him. It is not my duty to care for his well-being in your place. I was not supposed to care for, or safeguard him more than you should have. Am I my brother's keeper then? Those were Cain's reasonable but somewhat arrogant proposes. Cain, then who had made a pact with Satan, had first repented after his first conversation with Melchizedek. Then he refused to listen to Yahweh after he was told about why man was on earth, about the freedom of will granted man by God. In an arrogant style worthy of Tiamat, Satan, he reasoned. For example if a security guard had been hired to guard valuable property against a prowling burglar, the burglar shall watch the security guard and wait for the moment when he relaxes his guard to come and steal the valuables. So when next the security guard meets and accuses the burglar, the latter shall answer, I was out there to steal, and you were there to make sure that the property was safe. I came and stole, and you, where were you? Was I then also supposed to be the guardian? When told about his freedom of will, Cain was very angry. That is why Yahweh asked him, why are you so angry? If you do good there is a reward for you, and if you do not wish to do good, evil is at your door, but you can dominate it and decide. That is what the whole conversation should have been the Bible. Cain knew that even though God knew of his deed, he was not prevented from doing it, and was left free to decide and to choose. And we also have the evidence of Cain's initial repentance, when he thought he would be forgiven, then left to continue living a sinful life, as if nothing had happened, making no effort to change for the better. These were his words, My sentence is too great to bear. And by that he challenged Yahweh, thus proving that all effects of Satan, who truly had entered and possessed his body, were resurging. That is, Cain still preferred Satan's easy explanations. He said, My sentence is too great to bear. You who claim to have created everything, who claim that everything is held in your hand, cannot even forego my sin, now that I recognize my sin and am willing to repent. Cain by that refused to take in, the fact that he would have to be good, watch his behavior, and all that willingly, and change and become a better person. So he still argued and tried to settle it by taking a short cut to death and total annihilation, rather than to be always making the effort to be good if someone saw him and killed him. Before that new affront and rejection, Yahweh said, If someone kills you, he shall be punished seven times. Then Yahweh placed the famous mark on him. I said there was a physical one, which we shall see in a while. The spiritual one was that Yahweh lectured him on everything and told him to watch nature and animals and learn from them. And the spiritual sign that Yahweh gave Cain, Elianin told me, was a dog. In fact, Cain was the first ever human to own a dog as a pet. Yahweh told him that his dog would remind him of the spiritual security guard who should have kept and should be kept awake in Cain's heart, enabling him to watch for the evil one. He gave him the example of a farmyard left alone with only farm and domestic animals to guard it. A thief could come and plunder the farm, unchallenged and calmly watched by a herd of cows and ducks, chickens, cats and donkeys, because they do not know their master. With a dog it will be different, because a dog knows its master. 
Dogs were given a quality that other animals did not benefit from. A dog is always on alert, watches and barks, at any sign of danger, protects and lays down its life for its master. Yet most of the time the dog is maltreated and worse fed than all other animals. But it is grateful and rejoices for every bit thrown to it, which shows that the master never forgets totally and remembers that it is there. But as we know, evil Cain refused to listen, deciding that he preferred to be destroyed at his death, rather than obey God's law and make an effort to be good. And that rebellion earned him a mark that was branded on him, as an anti-messiah, which warned people off from killing him, and got him recognized, if he appeared to people in any guise. Well, Cain never died, and by that I mean that God has never taken his soul, but he did die in the flesh, as a lion and told me. Therefore, Cain who became a willing vessel for Satan and for evil just incarnates himself over and over again in wicked-minded people who usually mark their presence on earth with evil physical and spiritual deeds against humanity. And all those people end up being marked with the mark that was put on him. For Cain's body was taken over by the evil one who had disguised himself into a messenger of light to fool him. Elianin told me that Cain was physically marked on the arm. The mark was a number, the same number given by John in his prophetic book The Revelations. I was shown exactly what that mark looked like by Elianin. And they told me that it would be put on Viriln if he went ahead and accepted the offers of the renegades, and that he will be obliged to disclose it by divine decree. Well, when I first saw the anti-messiah's face on that space vessel, I also saw a picture that kept coming into my mind. It looked like a circle in which were three smaller circles. On the last days when they gave me personal lectures, I inquired of Elianan about that mark, and that is when they had explained the whole story of Cain's mark to me. And I was told, it is the mark of the anti-messiah, the anti-god, and the mark that was put on Cain's arm that is 666. The three circles are the ones that compose the bottom part of the three sixes. The large circle is made of the three tails of six, placed end to end. The mark can remain that way, but the three middle circles might also transform themselves into one, thus forming two concentric circles. That means that the spirits of Satan, the dragon, Cain, the beast, and the anti-messiah, son of Satan, have taken over and inhabit the body of the person bearing the mark. By that we mean that he has willingly agreed for them to inhabit his body from time to time. That mark will be put on Viriln by us, not the renegades, as he will erroneously think when he sees it. Therefore, if Claude Viriln is indeed the anti-messiah of our time, I know that he is, then he should also have been branded by a lion in again, so that humanity may not kill him, but to avoid him like the plague. Well, was he branded? Was he marked? The answer is, yes, according to Claude Viriln himself. Let us check his book The Message. He wrote. On July 31, 1975 that is, while we were out to get some fresh air with my wife Marie Paul, and Francois, we saw a machine seemingly enormous but silent, sometimes with imaginable speed, then instantaneously still, and moving in zigzags at about 500. 1,640 feet, meters from us. I was very happy that other people were with me witnessing the spectacle, and a sensation of indescribable happiness overcame me. Francois told me that the hair on his head had stood on end from emotion. To me, it was an obvious sign of the Elohim's consent to my moving in that region. The next morning, I noticed that I had a strange mark on my arm, on the biceps, close to the folding of my elbow. I did not relate it right away to what had happened before, later on, people told me that it could only be a mark made by the Elohim. It was a red circle of about three centimeters, one or one and one-fifth in, in diameter and five millimeters, one and one-fifth, thick inside of which were three smaller circles. The mark remained for the next fifteen days, then the three middle circles transformed into one, forming two concentric circles, the meeting of the 6th of August finally took place as planned, I decided to hold the assembly of match without really knowing why, some members informed me, that it was exactly the day of the 30th anniversary of the Hiroshima bomb explosion, and that it was also the day of a Christian holiday, the transfiguration, imbeciles will say that it was a coincidence. The message pages 173 to 178 well, he was certainly marked, 
but by my Alionin as a warning to humanity, not by his Elohim as he believes. And no, Claude Verilm, it was not a coincidence. And I will give you and my readers the answer. Ever since he went to the newspapers and told them that he had been contacted by extraterrestrials, and proclaimed himself the prophet of Yahweh, while insulting God, the Lord God had been mentally trying to persuade him to stop lying, to avoid damning himself. Claude of course did not meet an angel of God in person, but within him there was a strong conscience struggle. Finally Satan won him on his side again, and Claude Verum decided to go ahead, to continue lying and serving Satan, seeking only the position he wanted in the world, persuaded that Satan will one day save him when and if he ever comes to fight Messiah over the planet Earth. Verilm knows very well that he is serving Satan, but he has naively convinced himself that, because according to his own words he is his son, his messenger, Satan will save him. He is wrong. By going ahead and telling his lies using the Bible, passing Satan, Tiamat, for Yahweh, and blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, Claude Verilm had openly pledged his allegiance to Satan and damned himself. Therefore he was branded with the mark of Cain. On the supposed day marking the date of Jesus' transfiguration, he went out to express his deep love for Satan with his followers, poor people who are nothing but his victims. The next disaster that will come to earth will be because of men like Claude Verilm, and nuclear bombs will first explode, not in Cambodia or Japan, but in Palestine, in the Middle East, because of men like him, the so-called son of a Jew. Anyway in his book, Claude Verilm drew the marks that he got on his arm, and they were identical to the ones that I described in this book. That is one more proof, if there needs be, that he indeed is the anti-Messiah of our time. Claude Verilm has been branded as a proof, to point him out to humanity, so that he may not be killed in order for him to be freed from his debt for what he has now done and continues to do. And he has been marked so that the prophecy may be fulfilled which says, Let him who has understanding reckon the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, its number is 666. By his own admission, he was marked by people from a spaceship, unless he will now say that he had lied and had branded himself? In that case does he mean to tell us that he plotted to mislead the whole of humanity, his now ex-wife and that friend who had so graciously first put a farm at his, Verilm's, disposal? But let us not be detracted by such suppositions, because in his book he did say that his friend and his first wife had been there with him, and had also seen that UFO. But just with the few facts that I have already revealed in this book, it is very obvious that Claude Verilm is the anti-Messiah of our time. So why is he trying to pass Satan for Yahweh? The Personality of the Antichrist Just as Yeshua, Jesus, if you wish, came to earth and did the will of God and by his sacrifice proclaimed himself and became the Savior, living in Israel during his ministry, so Claude Verilm, his evil counterpart also was born in France, is doing his work in his satanic ministry, winning and gathering souls, to form the army of Satan for what will one day be the final, the ultimate battle of good against evil. He is the son of Satan, and his mission on earth is to corrupt humanity to total idolatry and Satan worship, and then to usurp the throne of earth and hand it over to Satan, his father who will then come one day finally, fiercely fighting against Messiah in a real space-age battle, to impede the will of God from being done. Of course Satan will fail, but at what cost? He will fail at the cost of millions of human lives. Yahweh's sentence on Satan was final and irrevocably eternal. So what he is doing now is pure wicked sabotage aimed at spoiling all chances for us all. For we were not stripped of our powers, we were temporarily made to forget them, and we can get them back when we die and leave our human bodies. All we have to strive for is to meaningfully swear our allegiance to God the Mighty One, and accomplish our life purpose, then the only thing which solely separates us from our fantastically evolved life, is death. And that means that if we succeed, we shall go back to being more powerful than we were before, more powerful than Lucifer and Satan could ever be, and of course, we shall go back to being immortal. There is a sentence hanging over Satan, his renegades and all his fallen followers, as well as his human followers and helpers. They shall be annihilated when time comes, so that they may no longer be of any danger either to us or to other life forms anywhere in the infinity of existence. Satan and his gang are very furious and jealous of any messiah that might come to earth, 
and they are determined to make Yahweh's plan to place a Messiah on earth as king, not to come true. So Satan wants to take over earth. And who could help him better than his own son? We read in what Verilm himself wrote, that the one who talked to him, claimed to be his father. Is that true? Now let us assume that it is true, that the alien personage was indeed his father. So, Satan had clawed Verilm born. His plan was for Verilm to form and establish a Satanist Marxist world government, with Verilm as the first leader. He shall reign, but not govern, the government shall really belong to Satan and Lucifer, or if you wish, his renegade extraterrestrials. Thus the latter could use Earth's nuclear resources and weapons to fight Yahweh and literally blast him out of his heaven. After the decline of that government that will be led by a Muslim leader, Claude Verilm's own created monster the Geniocrat movement would take over, helped by Satan and his renegades. Remember that passage in the book of Revelations, the dragon was to help the beast in going forth to the kings of the earth, to gather, all of them together for the battle of Armageddon. The dragon here is Satan. The beast today is Claude Verilm Rail and his Satanist followers, the members of his geniocrat movement, and without forgetting, all the devil worshippers who would not hesitate to side with him. Now Claude Verilm is a Marxist, he is an anti-messiah and a master Satanist. He gives his followers Dietrich Eckhart's Thulist mythical Aryan doctrines, which are nothing but the extraterrestrial Marxism born in the diseased minds of Satan and his renegades. All his followers are now filled with the hope of being turned into an eternal, immortal master race of geniuses. And none of them seems to realize that this is some dream that will never be fulfilled. Not in a million years, as Claude makes them the promises that they would be recreated by Satan. But Satan cannot do it, he does not have the power. Claude got the same training that Cain got from Lucifer, and the exact political doctrine that Karl Marx got from his demons. Georg Jung said. Marx will surely chase God from his heaven, Marx calls the Christian religion one of the immoral religions, Georg Jung, a Satanist. Satan gave Dietrich Eckhart a plan, he should present Adolf Hitler as a prophet destined to save humanity, then turn him into a politician and a world emperor, and eliminate all humans that did not agree with his ideology, and those likely to be powerful enough to go against him, either in the present or in the future. So he began emulating John the Baptist by introducing Hitler thus, here is the one for whom I was but the prophet and forerunner. And you can see the way those Satanists attempted to fool humanity by introducing their own messiah. But Hitler was not that. He perpetrated his massacres and died. Nonetheless he left for Ilm a legacy, which was Mein Kampf. In it Claude found instructions about how to succeed. He found out how to start as a small sect leader, a sect that would someday nurture a leader destined to end up as world emperor. Satan knew that he could never succeed by bringing forth another Hitler-like political figure as his messiah. This time he was going to use ruse, but in what way? Note these words by Zinoviev. We will grapple with the Lord God in due season. We shall vanquish him in his high heaven and wherever he seeks refuge, and we shall subdue him forever. But we must be cautious, much, much more cautious than hitherto. Zinoviev, a Satan worshipper, and if that does not convince the doubting reader that God exists, if those do not sound like the words of hate-filled people who mean business, then I am the future Queen of England. The next anti-messiah would secretly establish himself, building up a strong army of fanatical followers, while the whole of Earth's population will be distracted by an obvious Hitler clone. Well at the turn of the century we certainly did if one such person in Saddam Hussein. Now Satan was prepared. He contacted Claude Verilm and told him to go and write a book, telling people that he had met Yahweh who had chosen him as his last prophet. Notice, Satan used the Bible which is something like Yahweh's own testament, to discredit and ridicule Yahweh in the eyes of humanity, while winning supporters for Satan in the bargain. And Verilm obeyed him and wrote that book. Even though he would be known as a religious figure, Satan's messenger should call his organization a revolutionary movement right from the start. He should present political ideas, transmitting a worldview solution to the problems which he only would have suggested to the people, even though there really were no problems to start with. And Verilm has done this. Then he would begin telling his now fanatical followers, 
but they are part of an elite army of peaceful revolutionaries. He would preach peace, asking all world leaders to destroy all their nuclear weapons. While calmly feeding very harmful, subversive ideas to his followers, he would say that those ideas are just suggestions, and that he did not want to be expected to involve himself. Then immediately he should take over by starting the ball rolling, setting up the political party himself. Keeping everything well in hand, in fact making everyone around him believe that he is the only one who could lead them. And Claude Verilme did that, in the name of peace, of course. The highest-ranking members of his religious governing council would also be in this government, in our Antichrist's case, his bishops. And that did happen exactly that way too, they are now. Then, rendered famous with the help of his followers, he should begin contacting key public figures, pop stars, famous actors, artists, businessmen, scientists, and if time presses, heads of states. Varilne certainly did, and does all of the above. Claude Varilne has done all that now. All the things I have just enumerated. If no one stops him, having placed his own people in all the key countries of this planet, he would order them to begin getting his adversaries out of the way. They would be convinced, of course, that these adversaries are bad people trying to stop their guru, or the Elohim from realizing their dreams. They would do this legally, through normal elections, or by force, through assassination. And Claude Varilne has suggested this. Meanwhile the other thousands of members of his religious movement would become his army. By then they will be so convinced of being in the right that they will not realize exactly that they are being used by their savior. Existing members of the Raelian movement have sworn to take up arms if they have to, and die if possible, for Varilne. When his geniocrat party is in majority the others will be forced to submit. And Varilne has said this too. And then the geniocrat leader of the moment and his top five or seven in his world government would take over the world. Satan, Lucifer and their renegade extraterrestrials would then come, supposedly to help humanity, and help the geniocrat leader to govern as world leader, Claude said so himself, he will spring out of nowhere and the world will be stunned. Mussolini said those same words to his mother. Well, that was a little resume of Satan's aims, through Varilne's. What he is therefore planning is a world coup from inside the world governments, a coup from within. The reader will certainly think that I am exaggerating, will he not? Well this is absolutely no pleasantry. All this has been planned and set up, as I shall demonstrate in a while. But first, I want to quote another passage from one of his books, the same book that discloses that Satan told him that he was his father. Then one of the other two Elohim asked me to follow him. He took me to a small room, marvelously decorated. The walls were like the interior of a round pyramid, I was told to settle down in a comfortable chair, then the Aloha, singular of Elohim, started to speak. I must warn you that among the Elohim there is not only one opinion as to the future of humanity on earth, all my many followers and I, think that men are evil and that we should help mankind hasten its self-destruction, we propose that you help us accelerate the final cataclysm which would help purify the universe of beings who are only the result of an unsuccessful experiment. If you try to accomplish the mission given to you by Yahweh, you will suffer, perhaps even be put in jail, or even worse, put to death by your own blood brothers. If you accept my offer, and carry out my plan based on increasing the various racist tendencies existing in human beings so that a racial world conflict erupts, I will make you very powerful and very rich. Your role will consist in publishing the books which I will dictate to you and which will enable you to create various political and spiritual movements preaching destruction of the Arab races, the yellow race, and the black race, who have taken all the riches and the raw materials that the white race needs and deserves to have, since it was the effort of white men which permitted them to develop techniques to search for them and to utilize them in the first place. As soon as this planetary conflict breaks out, you and all those people who will have helped you to bring it about, will be saved. We will take you to safety on board one of our crafts, and eventually we will allow you to return to Earth when everything has been destroyed, so that you can start a new civilization as you may desire, and with our help of course. In the meantime, as you return to Earth, there will be a sum of one billions, five billions, ten billions or more if you wish, deposited in the name of a foundation in a Swiss bank account to help you get started. 
Tell us what the sum should be, and if it is not sufficient, other deposits will be made immediately, what a stupid lie. If everything has been destroyed, and all of humanity has perished, there should be no established government, therefore no one to run any banks, there shall be no banks, they would have been destroyed, the reader will remember? Furthermore, if you accept to help us, you and all of those people who will have helped you, will have the right to eternal life, the only thing we ask is for humanity to destroy this horrible civilization now existing on earth. For this you will also have to tell them that you have met with an extraterrestrial, and that he has warned you of an invasion of the earth by them, we will give you the necessary proofs of our existence and no one will doubt your word. In this way, humanity will increase its armaments to prepare itself against a possible attack from the sky. This will prevent Yahweh from another approach at attempting to stop men from killing each other or building up even more nuclear weapons, and aggression on earth. My proposition makes you a very rich and powerful man immediately, a man who will have accelerated a course in which humans are already engaged anyway. Let's welcome our father from space pages 96 to 99. The above speech was supposedly made by Satan himself, but Claude Verilme claims that he rejected the offer. But I can reveal that he did not refuse anything, and that those words were not the proverbial temptation of Satan as Claude the Satanic Prophet claims. To begin with, I have already given my account of the day when Elianin and I went to France, and that when they begged Verilme not to accept Satan's proposals and the mission the renegades were giving him, he refused. He did have a meeting with the renegades after he was branded with the mark of Cain. At that time he was toughened even more, and any human pangs of conscience were erased from his personality, as it happened to Cain, Hitler, and Mussolini. Those words I have just written above were only part of the whole serious conversation that Verilne had with Satan and the renegades. That was the actual offer they made to him and which he did accept. That was the actual invasion plan that he was given, and he received it after he had already published his first book. And now this is my message to all Raelians and to humanity. You be the judges. Those are the true intentions of Satan. For thirty-seven years now Claude Verilne has been spreading his message all over the world, and never once has he expressed any remorse. That is what Rael's mission is all about. He is not bringing peace and, or scientific eternal life on earth. He is bringing death and extermination and he accepted the renegade's proposals because he too, hates humanity. He does so because of his childhood and because of his mother on one part, and because the prophecy of God the Mighty One's prophet John, must be fulfilled on the other part. Most of all, it is written that men like Rael will be the devil incarnate, but Claude Verilne is worse. He is inhabited by the spirits of Satan, and of many other evil ones, and that makes a lethal combination of the worst kind. Let his followers know that, first of all, none of them will be saved or be recreated out of their dry bones. And Satan does not dispose of some of the machines that Rael boasts about. Also let them think again and believe me when I say that God really exists. Rael, the Antichrist of today has misled them all as it is written, for behold, your spirits must become subjects to that angel who fell from before the presence of the eternal God, and became the devil and your spirits must become like his, and you become devils, angels to a devil, to be shut from the presence of your God, and to remain with the father of lies in misery like himself. That being who transforms himself near to an angel of light, stirs up the children of men to secret plots of murder and all manner of secret works of darkness. Therefore I say to Raelians, save yourselves before it too late. You still have the chance. Now let us continue. As I said Satan wants to accelerate the destruction of humanity because he is afraid of seeing the word of God being accomplished, and because he wants to slow and delay the downing of his time of punishment. He does not want to see justice catching up with him. He does not want to see the King Messiah that is to come, actually coming or being crowned King of Earth. Claude Verilne did very much accept all of Lucifer and Satan's offers of money. He is not poor. All Raelians know about that Raelian foundation to which they all contribute. He has more money than they imagine. And he wants to destroy the Arab race to get closer to Israel, Satan's real target. He wants to use the yellow race, so he entered into a common-law relationship with Lisa Sunagawa, his Japanese girlfriend. 
Through that connection he hoped to be trusted by the Japanese one day, but the name, the image, and honor of Japan will one day be destroyed, when they will be stirred into launching bombing raids onto Europe, and most of all on France which nourished the leader of the Raelian movement. He used Lisa as long as it suited him, then that relationship finished and he moved on. He wants to destroy the black race because of his racist, Aryan world domination doctrines, because deep down he is a racist, even if he does not show it. And he certainly wants to destroy the Jews because of his deep-seated anti-Semitic views, not as a human being, but as a carrier of Lucifer and Satan's spirits. But as such the human Varun is simply a misanthropist. But the chosen people will always remain chosen, and everything will come to pass as divinely decreed. For God the Mighty One has sworn, saying, Truly as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Those books that Satan was proposing to dictate to Viril, all the Raelians have now read them. Through the sensual meditation book and the accompanying tapes, they are already tied in heavy chains from which they shall never free themselves unless they repent, immediately, stop those sexual practices he taught, get baptized and accept God, under whom only, they may then take refuge from Satan. Through his geniocracy the Raelians have been and are being fed the renegade subversive political doctrines. The Raelians must take off the swastikas that they wear around their necks, and which they now know, keep them under his power. That the design of that metal gets altered means nothing, it will always be nothing but a swastika, underneath. The Raelians must throw away or even burn their pendants, proclaiming aloud that they reject Satan. Then they should write to me by filling the forms I give in this book, and allow me to begin helping them. Then they should allow me to teach them how to help other Raelians. I beseech all Raelians to follow this advice. Now. The Son of Perdition. Claude Viril is not the divinely promised Messiah, as he has told the world, he is the Son of Perdition. Many prophets wrote about men like him all right. He is the lawless one, the evil one in him lives, the one who was named the Son of Perdition. It is written, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition 2 Thessalonians, 2. I am happy and honored to be the first to name one such man in a book this century, and the one to reveal and expose him as a possible man marked with the number 666. Books will be written in the distant future about the butchering geniocrat anti-messiah, because he will be the one who will bring attacks to earth from outer space. And that brings me to my next subject and warning. The subject is nuclear armament. Claude Viril wants total, worldwide nuclear disarmament. But he is not the heroic revolutionary that he wants everybody to believe he is. That sickly and paranoid wish of his, to see earth free of nuclear weapons, lies elsewhere. While there is still a risk of them being blasted out of the sky by humans, Satan and his renegades will not risk attacking the countries possessing those weapons. But if Earth is disarmed, they will attack us promptly. Remember this, if Japan had had any atomic bombs, America would never have dropped one there, for fear of retaliation. While willing to kill the Japanese with atomic bombs, they would not have wanted any to be dropped on American soil. They therefore dropped those bombs, because they knew the Japanese were helpless to retaliate in kind. Therefore Earth's nuclear weapons must be kept exactly where they are, not for the invasion of other Earth countries, but to preserve planetary peace, and keep Satan and the renegade extraterrestrials at bay, during the final battle, or any other battle between us and any non-Earthly attackers and invaders. I know that I am nobody, and there is no reason why anyone should believe me. But nonetheless, I will still advise the world powers now, to hang on to their nuclear weapons because the day we get rid of them, we shall plunge right back to where we were over seventy years ago, deep in wars. Not that there will be no third world war. It will surely come one day, because of the imbeciles that we, humans, are. Therefore, Earth must keep their nuclear weapons and watch the sky. If ever we are attacked from above, the attack will be from the renegades and rail Satan, and the only equal defense for us will be our nuclear weapons, and Elyonin. Elyonin will surely come with their armies to deliver us, using against the renegades weapons of equal power. And Satan and the renegades will be massacred and captured with all their friends, both humans and extraterrestrials. 
To all Raelians who would not want to believe these words, I say that Claude Verilm by now must know who I truly am as a spiritual entity, and he knows exactly what I am talking about here. He should also know that it is time for him to start running again. So it has been over the millennia, he appearing here and there, because he is not to settle anywhere, ever. For he will remain a wanderer and a fugitive, until he is rounded up with his bishops, his renegade council of the wise, and with those who never heed warnings like this one. It took me so long to find him and catch up with him, and this time I will not lose sight of him. I am a Satan and anti-Messiah hunter and buster. And those who contacted Viril, and him, and his willing followers, are my quarry. Like father, like son. As a human being, Claude Viril is just as stupid, as mad, and thoughtless as his father, Satan. He thought it clever to try a psychological trick on his future followers. This was the plan. He shall very openly expose all his intentions, all his aims, and all his plans. Then he will say that those were just temptations that he had of course rejected. And because he will tell his readers and followers that he had rejected the offers, they will blindly and stupidly believe him. Reasoning that if he had accepted, he would not have risked raising their suspicions by telling them everything. And amazingly it worked. All his followers fell for it. The same trick was played over the subject of the extraterrestrial renegades. Now his followers accept that the renegades are not usurpers, simply because he told them. He wrote and boasted. Unfortunately, a great number of narrow-minded fanatics, guided by the clergy of these religious, afraid of losing their source of revenue, will oppose the general rally. They will allege that the Elohim are usurpers, or that they have been sent by the devil, and facing their own Christ, they would joyfully crucify him again, just as the clergy of the Inquisition would have burned Jesus as a sorcerer in his own name, if he had the misfortune to fall into their hands in that epoch. Then he goes on to say, as his predecessor, and idol, Hitler said, that the narrow-minded Christian fanatic religion will disappear. Wrong. As I have already said, Christianity will never truly die down. It could just change from what it is now, but it will survive. The anti-Messiah will have millions murdered if he can, but as he says himself, Satan will come before and problems will arise. And he said a lot more to make that psychological trick about the Elohim usurpers work. But that is what Satan and his extraterrestrial renegades will be. And they will bring neither Jesus nor the old prophets with them. If they bring anyone and present them as such, those would be impostors. Read the Bible and see what Yeshua, Jesus, said about the Messiah to come. There is no prophecy anywhere that a perverted prophet shall come, begging for land to build a villa or palace for I don't know which Elohims, as Claude Verilm claims that Jesus was just a small prophet who simply announced him, Claude Verilm, as the future Messiah. He presented himself to his followers as a prophet of Yahweh, then he proceeded to openly lie about everything he quoted from the Bible, and they swallowed it all, without even bothering to read it by themselves. Simply because he said so, they believed him. 